are you feeling today? I want to talk to you about the cost of perfectionism to your health. A lot of women have it, me included, and what is it doing to your health? What is the cost to your health? Now, I'm Adele, I'm a nutritionalist. I'm interested in your mindset, especially your perfectionist mindset, and I love exercise. I teach exercise a lot. So this blog is going to outline the cost of perfectionism to your health. What are the real consequences? What are the outcomes of you micromanaging your family? The consequences of you micromanaging your work and even your social life, your friends. Perfectionism can make you ill. It is an illness that can make you physically sick. And it's embedded in women. It's a characteristic. It's hard to see for yourself and to step back from. So let's explore what the cost of perfectionism is and what it's doing for you. Now hold on a minute, Adele. Before I start throwing stones in glass houses, let's look at my own perfectionist behaviour. I have to admit I am a recovering perfectionist. Oh really, Adele, with your perfect flowers and your Instagram posts at 6am starts? I can't help it. It's part of me. But I'm going to talk about that a little more openly. You won't see me with chipped nail varnish, or if you do, you'll see me in the corner of the room, twitching, cowering, a distorted, pained face. <laughs> That's my level of perfectionism. But hold on. Most women wear a perfectionist label. We have high standards and we have high standards levied against ourselves. My high standards against myself, but interestingly, I don't hold those high standards towards others. Uh, it's quite thought provoking that I can be kind, graceful and understanding to others. And yet I don't afford myself that same kind of love. Does that sound familiar to you? Do you forgive others and yet you hold yourself up to very high standards? You can allow others to kick back. You can allow them to enjoy their free time and know that that is going to help with productivity. If you kick back and relax, your productivity is going to be higher. If you kick back and relax and you're not so perfectionist in your thinking, then you're going to be happier. You're going to be saner, <laughs> and I'm talking to myself as well, and you're going to be less grumpy with the kids when they don't have the same bed-making standards that you have, or any bed-making standards. That's my bone of contention. There's a little game in my house, I digress. There's a little game in my house. Who can press mummy's OCD button? Who can leave things out on the worktop that's going to make mummy twitch? <laughs> so that OCD button, they just sit back and they watch and find out how it's gonna break loose, what's gonna happen. But it's okay, because my hubby, my husband is a retail guru and he is a, a shopkeeper from generations before. So the cupboards all have to have tins facing front. So he's got his OCDs. And my 11 year old daughter freaks <laughs> whenever there is fruit on the protein shelf in the fridge. Who puts that there? That'll be me triggering their buttons. <laughs> to watch the OCD effect there, the perfectionist button. Okay, so I've opened up. Apparently, I do have a black sense of humour, a very dark sense of humour. I have a crazy family and I have a perfectionist trait. There it is. I'm not perfect. <laughs> do you have all your ducks in a row? Are you impenetrable with your perfectionism? Do you do everything because you are the only person that can get it done right. You're a perfectionist. <laughs> 
And you might very well be right, but hey, what is it doing to your health? True perfectionists, really hardcore perfectionists can be obsessively self-critiquing all the time. I could have done that better. I could have done that better. Perfectionists have a fear of failure. Does that sound like you? Or they have such a huge fear that they procrastinate. They don't get anything done. And that's fascinating about being a perfectionist. It is so hard to define. It is deep, deep personality trait. But most of us, or some of us, don't want to let go. It's a part of our identity, your and my identity. It's our core identity. And perhaps you don't want to modify that. But you will be more productive, happier, saner. <laughs> you will change your life and change others if you let go of your perfectionisms. Now, I'm not very good at just leaving you with a negativity. I have to big it up. I have to make those changes for you. So this is what I would suggest. I've got four things that I would suggest that would help you and me <laughs> to change our perfectionism. Number one, turn down the thermostat one notch at a time, okay? It's not going to all happen overnight, but you could just let the odd thing go. The milk left out, let it go. The socks that need picking up, just go and do it. It will make you happier. Just turn it down one little notch. Number two, compare perfectionism with just getting things done, okay? Let go of the perfectionism and just get things done. Can I tell you a secret? I spend a lot of time writing these blogs and then I script them and then I video them. I turn them into a vlog. But once I've videoed them, they are gone. I never watch them back. There can be all sorts going on in my background, but I let it go. Okay? Getting things done. Let go of the perfectionism. Number three. Bring your perfectionism and balance it out with a little self-compassion. I am a huge believer in self-care Sunday. Whatever that means for you, a walk and a cake, maybe that's mine, buying a beautiful handmade soap, something that's going to self-compassion towards you. So a little bit of self-compassion, a little bit of letting go of that perfectionist speak, and being kind to yourself. Number four, this is my favourite, tend and befriend. So women are very good at tending. We tend our gardens, we tend our house households, we tend our workplaces, but we also befriend. And that's because of a hormone, oxytocin. It is the friendship hormone. Some people call it the love hormone. It's called the cuddle hormone and girls have it en masse. It helps us to socially bond. Tend and befriend. Find a pal to chat to. Talk through your perfectionisms. They will show you theirs and vice versa. You can see your commonalities. You can laugh at what you choose to do, as I have done with my OCD. <laughs> you can self-diagnose and you can release just by chatting to your friends, okay? It's our innate ability, we can chat. So open up, it will help enormously. So there's your four tips. Shine the light of awareness on your perfectionism and turn that thermostat down. Be kind to yourself. Tell your friends, open up and be guided by what they say. Chat to me. I would love to open up and find out what your perfectionist habits are and how you can step away from them. It's easy to do. You just need to book a call, book some time for yourself. And let's get to the bottom of how you're feeling so that you can change your health. That's what's most important. I think one of my other gorgeous, my other OCD is about being gorgeous. I know 
that being gorgeous is something that every woman can be from her heart. You can do it. I don't want you to be left behind worrying about the size of your bum or the wobbly bits on your arm. You are bigger and better than that. And I am obsessed about showing you how gorgeous you are. There you go. <laughs> Another one of my OCD habits. Because I know you can do it. I've done it for so many women. I've done it for myself. Break the mould. Be gorgeous. Be happy. I'm Adele. I'm a nutritionalist. I'm interested in your mindset, especially your perfectionist mindset. And I love to exercise. It's what keeps me happy. Take care.